Right fellas, when you get into the game, get power turned on and the first thing you need to do as quickly as you can is get the entangler weapon and if you don't know how to get this, go check out my guide, I'll whack it in the description. And when you've got the entangler, we can now look for four floppy disk locations around the map. And I'm going to show you this next step in a very clear way, also with a very cool tactic that will help you out later on. So before I show you these floppy disk locations, all I'm going to say is get a camera ready to take pictures of the screen and also a pen and paper ready for later steps. So let's go for the hardest floppy disk and this one is before the cargo bay area and you'll need to come to this vent here and inside the vent you can see on the floor a floppy disk. So all we do is get our entangler out, aim it through the gap in the bars, keep the trigger held down as we hover over the floppy disk and then your gun will pick up the floppy disk. And all you want to do now is aim towards the end of the wall where the smoke and the vent is. And you just let go of the trigger button. And when you do that, it will send the floppy disk through the vent and out into the map. So when you've sent the floppy disk through the vent, it has many spawn locations. And on screen now, I'm going to show you where it can spawn. So basically, any vents in this area, or even as far as where bomb stoppers is, go check them. Also, if you wanted to, you could check every vent in the map. But if you can't find the floppy disk, make sure you definitely sent that floppy disk through the vent with your entangler. And if you're not sure, just go back and try again. So, here is my floppy disk location. You don't need to put this into nil yet. And for my tactic, you will want to pick it up, take a picture of the symbol on the floppy disk. And also, if you want to just take a picture or take a note of where this floppy disk is located on the map. So you don't forget. And now we can move on to the next location. So for the second floppy disk, you'll be in spawn for this one. And you can see these white helmets on the floor. You want to get your entangler out, shoot this helmet, keep the trigger button held down. And all you want to do is take this helmet to the laser door that you can't enter. And all we're going to do is come to the laser door, aim left and let go of the trigger button. And this will open up the area. And if for some reason it doesn't open up, just go get another helmet, try again. And just make sure you're aiming left like I did. So now head inside and pick up this floppy disk on the table. Again, take a picture of this and also take a note where this floppy disk is located on the map. The third floppy disk location is next to Pack-A-Punch and it is to the left next to this stanchion here. So again, we pick it up, take a picture of the symbol and remember where it is. So the last floppy disk is actually located in a blue phantom enemy and we can spawn them in by heading into Pack-A-Punch and then leaving Pack-A-Punch. And this blue phantom might take a few minutes to spawn, so the best tactic here is to head back to Neil's machine, wait for the blue phantom to come for you, and when it spawns, kill this lad, and he will drop a floppy disk somewhere on the floor where he was killed. Pick this up, take a picture of it, and for this one, you definitely need to remember where this floppy disk is. This is why I killed the blue phantom here in spawn, because I know where it is. So now on to the next step, you want to ignore the floppy disk for a second, and around the map are paper scraps or POSIG notes that have symbols on them. And these symbols are like the symbols you see on the floppy disk. And these are the ones that you took a picture of. And yes, I could show you their locations, but I've made this epic screenshotable guide for you fellas. So screenshot this fellas because all the paper scraps are the same for everyone in everyone's game. So this is where my tactic comes into play. And you want to get a piece of paper and a pen. And you want to get your pictures out that you took earlier of your floppy disks. And all you want to do is draw the four symbols. And you want to make sure these drawings are really clear to the picture. So now you've drawn your symbols. Look at the guide I gave you with all the paper scraps on. And then look at your drawings and see which row has all four of your drawn symbols in. And you want to be careful because some symbols look very similar. But you should be able to find the row very quickly. And for me, all four of my symbols are in this row. So what you want to do now to make this super easy is draw that row of six out on some paper that has your four symbols in. So your paper should look something like this, fellas. And the aim here is to look at your symbols, look at the row, and see which one comes first in the row of six. So as you can see, this symbol is the first of my symbols in the row of six. So all we do is put a number one near that symbol. And on to the next one, this drawn symbol of man is next in the row of six. So all we do is put a number two near my drawn symbol. And then this third drawn symbol of man is next in the row of six. So all we do is put a number three near that symbol of man. And lastly, there's one more symbol left. And as you can see, it's the last of my symbols in the row. So we put a number four 
near that symbol. So yeah, fellas, I hope that is simple for you. Get a camera, pen and paper, screenshot my guide, and you'll boss it. So now on your bit of paper, your symbols have an order of one, two, three, four. And all we're gonna do is input symbol one into the first slot on Neil. So all we do is go find the floppy disk with that symbol on. And for me, it was this floppy disk. So I picked it up, headed to Neil, put symbol number one into slot one of Neil. And then I went for the floppy disk with the symbol on for number two, picked it up, inputted it into slot two of Neil. And then I went for the third symbol in my order, picked it up and put it into the third slot of Neil. And then finally put my last symbol in. And if you do this correctly, fellas, you will see Neil go red and angry and it will start opening and closing doors. But if you fail this, fellas, your floppy disk locations will stay the same, but the symbols on them will change. So you'll have to do the whole floppy disk step again. And you'll have to take pictures and do it all again. So now you've done that crazy step, the next step is to head to the theater, get your entangler out, come to the brute, and you can see this button here on the wall. Hold the entangler down on this button and head to the Beast from Beyond poster in the arcade area. And all you do is let go of the trigger button when you have the button next to the poster and the poster will suck it up. And now you've done that fellas, you want to head to the med bay area where you unlock the blue lasers. And under the table is a button, press the button and this will open this cabinet of dials and switches. And what you want to do here fellas is take a picture of this cabinet of switches, basically your aim is to make each dial all horizontal or all vertical. It could be either way, but that's the aim. And by taking a picture, we can see which dials are different to others. So it is like trial and error, but you've got a bit of a, a bit of a system going on. So look at your picture, press square on the dials that are horizontal. And when you press a dial, it'll change loads of dials. But by looking at your picture, you will know which dials are still horizontal. So do what I'm doing here fellas and it should have worked and you will have hacked Neil. And if it doesn't work that's okay, just take a picture of the cabinet again and this time change the dials that are vertical. So we look at the cabinet, look at our picture and repeat the same process. And if that doesn't work fellas, that's okay. You can just keep on repeating that process of taking pictures of the cabinet when you fail and just choosing either horizontal or vertical dials to change. And like I said, it is trial and error, but it won't take you long, just stick to my tactic. And when you've hacked Neil, you will see all the dials on the same angle. And now you only have a certain amount of time to run back to spawn, get your entangler out and hold the trigger on Neil. And this will make Neil float. And what you wanna do is take Neil to pack a punch. Watch out for the doors closing. And if a door is closed, just wait for it to open. Also watch out for the zombies, they can down you and knock Neil off your gun. And if any of these happen, a nuke will go off and you've failed and you'll have to repeat the dial step again to hack Neil and then retry this step again. So yeah, it's pretty tough is this, but hide and seek fortune card is very good to keep the zombies off you and wait for doors to open. And as you can see, I'm making my way to pack a punch, dodging zombies, and then I press square on pack a punch to enter. And all you do is input Neil into this computer here. And all you do is hover over that computer and let go of the trigger button. And boom, once you've done that, you can now get set for the boss battle. So fellas, this boss fight guide in solo is going to be as clear as I can show you. And it's a no cheating guide. I've seen people use Purify, is it? And uh, everyone's saying it's cheating or glitching or something, lol. But uh, there's none of that shit here. We're going to do it properly. And here is my epic solo guide. So the guns you want are the Reaver double packer punched and the Kendall's double packer punched. The Reaver will take out the phantoms and small alien twats. And the pistols are just stunning and kill anything in its path. And if you want to change the Reaver to like a LMG, do it. Double pack a bunch of that. It's also good in the boss fight. And as you can see, I've got Bomb Stoppers on, Juggernog, Quick Revive, Double Tap and Stamina Up. And also I've got Perk in Shirt on and Second Hand on. And also in the boss fight, you've got Perks. And also you've got Unlimited Ammo. There's an Ammo Refill box, so don't worry about Ammo. So when you're ready and set, fellas, headed to Pack-A-Punch, hold square on this computer when Neil's head inside, and you'll be teleported to boss battle. So the first thing you want to do is when you spawn, head inside the ammo container, and as you can see, you can press square on this to grab full ammo whenever you need it. And now you want to look outside, and you can see this blue laser. 
This is a sentry gun and it will snipe open containers. And inside these containers are rhinos. And all we need to do is kill these rhinos. And the best way to kill them is to run around, slide and shoot the back of these. You can shoot the face but shooting the back of the rhinos will do more damage. And then when you kill a rhino, head back inside a container. And the reason I'm saying head back into the container is because that stupid sentry gun laser can kill you if you stood in its path when it's opening a container. So watch out for that. So that is a tactic here fellas, stay in cover when the blue laser shoots. Head outside so you don't get trapped in the container because that would be pretty poo. And yeah, kill the rhinos. Four rhinos will spawn and these are pretty easy to kill. So the first two rhinos will spawn on their own and the last two rhinos will spawn into the map together so watch out for that. And also when the last two rhinos spawn, the next area of the map will open up so you have some more space to head into there. So fellas, kill the four rhinos and head into this area here with the portals. And for this part of the boss fight you will have loads of those small alien turds spawn. And all you want to do is run up and down here and just kill them. And the pistols are epic to use. And also fellas, don't let the aliens pile up behind you. Try keep a train of about 3 to 4 at max or they will deck you. So keep killing these fellas and eventually all the portals will turn off. And this is a good time to go get some ammo. So now you've killed all those small aliens and the portals go off. You will see some phantom spawn. And the best thing you want to do is hoard. And the best technique here is to do what I'm doing here fellas. This hoarding route is basically made for you. And this hoarding technique is the best thing to do, especially for the next steps of the boss fight. So this is the best route to take, kill those phantoms, and you can move on to the next part of the boss fight. So now you've killed those phantoms, you will see the portals come back on, and you'll have some small aliens and phantoms spawn. And the best thing to do here is kill a few, but hoard them all up. And while you are doing this, you need to keep your eye out for free computer terminals. And if you've been doing my hoarding technique, you will have run past them. And eventually they'll all turn green, and when you see them turn green, you need to run up to them all and press square on them as fast as you can. And if you're in co-op, you all need to press on these terminals at the same time. But in solo, you've got to press these as fast as you can. So do what I do here, run to the first terminal, and then carry on on your hoarding technique. Run to the next terminal, which is just behind this container. And then you want to go up this container, jump off. And when you jump off, just watch out for some enemy spawning so you can always pre-shoot some pistols. And then the last computer terminal is up here. And once you've pressed these three computer terminals, you want to keep on hoarding and the next part of the boss fight will start. So in the starting spawn area of the boss fight, a container will open up. And this container is opposite to the ammo refill container. And inside is a computer panel. And when you hit the third of the computer terminals that turn green, this will start a timer. And it'll last about 2 minutes, so it'll count down from 2 minutes. And the best thing to do here is set a timer on your phone so you have some sort of idea of the timing. And you want to do what I do here, fellas. You know, you can run and have a look at the panel. Just make sure you don't get cornered. So keep holding. There's no need to kill any enemies apart from enemies that might spawn in front of you. And eventually, the timer will have reached zero. And when you've got an idea of when the timer is up, go to the panel, press square on it like I do here. And when you do this, the whole place will go dark, and then the two bosses will spawn. And to complete the easter egg, you've got to kill these two bastards. So in solo fellas, oh my god, these can take so many bullets. You'll be refilling your ammo about 100 times in solo. So the best way to do this is again, do my hoarding technique. And you need to make sure you don't let the blue rhinos get close to you at all. Keep a good distance from them at all times, because if they get too close, they'll probably down you. So here was what I did fellas, I would run and then at some point I would turn around when I had a good amount of time to shoot at these two and then I would pop them with the pistol, it seems a pistol is pretty decent against these, well you can't really tell but it makes a nice noise isn't it? And then when they get too close you want to keep on hoarding and just keep repeating the same process and you've got to be very patient here fellas because even if you had about 6 pistols going at them it would still take an age to kill them. And when you are shooting these two, every now and then some of their blood will fall onto the floor and this blue blood will stay there for the rest of the game and you really don't want to be stepping in this fellas because it does hurt you. And also when the blue blood is dropped about 4 or 5 small aliens will spawn as well so just take them out and then focus back on the two rhinos. And when you've killed the small aliens this is the best time to go grab some more ammo 
and you've got to be pretty quick here because you don't want to be trapped in there with the two rhinos. So this is what I would do. I would hold up around here. I would run up this ramp and then let the two rhinos get to the bottom of the container I just ran up. And then I would jump off and go get some ammo as fast as I could. And then I would go back through this container and start hoarding again. So yeah, fellas, that's it. You need to be very patient hoarding, turning around, shooting. And you want to watch out for the blue blood because eventually there'll be so much blood on the floor you won't be able to run anymore and this can down you. And if you go down fellas and you've got perk insured and quick revive and stuff like that, perks are up this ladder here. And also this ladder is a great place to hoard when the floor is covered with some of the blue blood. So you want to bear the ladder in mind towards the end when there's so much blood on the floor. And this is what happened to me fellas. I ain't gonna lie and say oh yeah I did the easter egg and wasn't recording lol. I died fellas. To be honest I died. And too much blue blood killed me and it was the end for me. But I thought I'd upload this solo guide without completing it because I have everything you need to know. And I was literally spamming these lads for about 30 minutes and I was so close to killing them, I think. But it was pretty painful. So yeah, kill those two lads, use my tactic, and then you'll complete the easter egg, get the cutscene as well. So thanks for watching, please subscribe to Just Gaming Fellas, please comment if you need some help. And lastly, bring on Call of Duty in November for more zombie guides. See you then fellas.